You know, if we were to use ourselves to represent the size to computing power ratio of old and new computer chips, one of us would end up being half the size of the other inside of roughly 24 months. And would I be the old chip or the new chip? You could be the new chip. Just how do I make you half my size? Well, that's easy. I just move away from the camera. Really? Yeah, check this out. Oh, that's good. All right, hold on, hold on. Here we go. That's it. Look at that. Oh, that's great. That's a pretty convincing illusion. All right, go farther back. Okay. I just want to see how small we can get them. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Yeah, this force perspective trick works great. Yeah, but in order for you to correctly represent the last 35 years of advancement, at this point you'd be so small you'd be invisible to the naked eye. You know, strangely, even though he's tiny now, I'm still afraid of him. By 1971, the first microprocessor had shrunk the ENIAC down to this size. By 1980, you'd need this microscope to see it. By 1990, you'd need an electron microscope. Now, we can't afford an electron microscope until we get paid for this Intel gig, but here's what it would look like. In 1971, it wasn't much bigger than this mosquito, less than one square centimeter. By 1999, you could fit them into a space the size of a red blood cell, or 1 25,000th of an inch. Today, it's roughly the size of a single spike on one of these bacteria. Nobody knows the theoretical limit of how small transistors can get. All we know- Adam, can I get back to my normal size? Sure, here we go. There you go, that was almost convincing. Yeah, I really like the practical effects better. Am I really back to full size? With an acceptable tolerance, you're about 98%. Okay, I can live with that.